you can see in the center right there behind the drum is the bearing when we did the face of the riser right well when you're working on the uh, curve of the riser press up against that all right keep the handle up against there because what that does is that's going to give you more control as you have that it's like a router peg you come up here and now you have control it's not wobbling around so by having it against there you have much better control so when you get into the real fine part of the limb right here and you don't want to cut into the lamination itself this gives you much much better physical control now I take and I bend so what I do is I will take my hand and I will take my thumb put it in the middle and I'll bend this back a bit and then come up to it and sand into it so I can look into it and see how close I'm coming keeping control of it not to slip and go in and to ruin the lamination of the limb if you wreck the lamination you got to strip it all off re-sand it all down and put new laminations on gluing them on when it's already cut out is actually a bit of a glue nightmare do your best to not make that mistake I've done that once or twice and it's also easy to get in a hurry sometimes and actually grind out the curve on your riser and then get excited and cut this out thinking you're going to glue it on and that's actually the wrong process okay glue the riser on when it's blocked then lay out the curves and then sand the curves down with the drum sander being really careful coming in the wood lamination let's see if we can turn this so you can see a little bit better having your tools on portable tails tables is really advantageous you can see how we come in them of course my drills in the way all right so we come in and we're just going to work gently need the vacuum on Uh, one thing I might mention is I have the drum sander going at its slowest possible speed and I'm using 60 grit. Keep the drum clean. I can't say that often enough for any of your sanding implements. And a little bit of crate goes a long ways. It costs eight bucks and it'll last you like four years, depending on how much you work, of course. Now you can see if we look in here, we're getting real close on this. We're about a sixteenth off. So I am coming in real carefully, starting up high, coming in slow, and I have my thumb right here in the middle. Now, if you look and you're a little higher on the top, if you're a little wider on the top than the bottom, then place your thumb up there and apply a little more pressure to that spot. You want to keep it parallel as possible. Now I don't, it's really important to keep it clean when you get down low because if, if the bottom part of the drum starts to clog up faster than the top one for whatever reason, it will sand less. Now if you look right here, let me get this in here. This is flush right at the top and not quite at the bottom. So I'm going to come into the bottom, press on the bottom a bit, and make it flush. You see, it's totally smooth now, so a lamination will glue in there real nice. Now make sure that you have a nice curved smooth, and it's not bumpy on the way down, and it's a nice casual taper in. 
this one is a little bit high right in here so I'm just going to take that down a little bit up against the peg and then use my thumb in here and take that little bit of bump out this is how the bow is going to go in the form the clamp is going to come on top here and clamp in now the center mark will be covered by the clamp so consequently um, you you could have slippage which will put the bow out all right so what you want to do is put some marks on the bow and the form so that you can tell if you're slipping or not so what I've done here there's a felt mark on the limb and on the form on the right side right here is the aluminum bracket on the form so I've gone up and lined up another black mark on the limb with that side of that bracket you have a mark on this side of the bracket that side of the bracket and down at the end of the fade out right here you can see when you go and clamp this down you can keep the bow square in the form so it doesn't shift to one side or the other all right so we're getting closer all the time what we have to do now is we have to measure out how long the, the single piece of glass is for this side of the limb for each side we need to cut our fiberglass down to size we need to make sure all the laminations are cut to the right length so that when they all go in the form nothing comes up short it's better to glue and have things a little oversized in length than too short now we also have the fade outs those are made with the jigs this is the jigs I think I talked about these before you take this into the sander bring the drum up to just above the height of the wide end of the jig and then what you do then you turn it around and start sanding and it sands a little bit off here then you lower it a little bit it, little by little it it puts the taper on to the fade outs by running through the sander now if you don't have this stuff and you want to do this then uh, you can just you can order uh, fade outs through old master crafters and they'll make them for you they're not cheap they're probably like 20 bucks a set all right, so that's quite a bit to the bow. Uh, I make them myself. I did these already. You can see these are right down to almost nothing on the end, and they're there. So we also have to take these. Now I've marked these already. This is the tip fade out, and uh, at five thousandths of an inch. So what we have to do is we have to pull this in and measure how much uh, fade out I need and then we're gonna have to mark that too alright so that we know where it goes and so it fades out in the right place okay so those are things that are yet to be done I don't think I showed you how to make the tapered limb laminations first time around you might want to just order a set uh, from Bingham or Old Master Crafters. I'm not sure which you want to go with. It doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the measuring and stuff and all the little things that, you know, aren't real skill building or any specialties. You just got to measure, mark, and cut. Measure twice, cut once. I've got the glass here and stuff, and I'm going to do the glass last. I need to measure out what the limb links will be and things. And when you go to cut thin pieces of wood like these fade outs that go down, they're going from 20 thousandths of an inch thick here down to nothing here. If you're going to trim, actually scissors, good scissors, trim real well. You saw you can split the wood and stuff. Uh, and to be honest about it, a real fine dovetail saw or something is if you have to saw by hand, place them on a board and cut straight through. Do not put them over an open edge because they'll bend and they'll crack because they're so thin. So you have to be pretty careful about that. I would not use a bandsaw ever to cut the thin stock across the grain. It'll break it all up and everything. So sometimes hand tools are the best answer. If you had a jig, you could cut it through a table saw, but if you have coarse teeth on the blade, it's going to wreck it too. So 
handsaw is the best answer. I have a number of, I like Japanese saws that cut on the pull stroke. All right. Uh, <clears throat> this is a little Japanese dovetail saw. You can see it has very fine teeth on it. All right, and that cuts that thin stock really well. And you don't have to worry too much about being real square and all that because it doesn't matter. It's just all in the length because you're going to trim all these ends and everything down the road. So I'm going to clamp this in place so I don't knock it off and actually break and split one of the laminations. If you crack a lamination, it's not the end of the world because what you do is spread it when you glue up, put glue in the crack, and then glue on both sides. And, and when you put it under pressure and clamp it, it'll glue that little crack that you made by bumping it or whatever. And that will actually not be a weak spot in the bow unless it was really severe, uh, but mostly that is going to just fill in with epoxy, it'll be compressed, and it'll harden, it'll be stronger than the wood around the joint. But I always like to spread the crack a little, get a razor blade and go in and get some glue down in the crack and stuff, and then put it all in place and glue it all up. And uh, I have a bow still to this day that had, I bumped the end of the lamination because I wasn't being careful. So I patched it up like that, put it all together, and that bow's still shooting many, many years later. So just a, a bit of advice, because it's going to happen sooner or later. All right, I have m made the fade out. I make them 14 and a half inches to start with, both of them, riser and tip fade outs. And then I cut them down. The tip fade out is cut to nine and a half inches in length. I've got it pretty fine on the edge but not fine enough for a cold bleed into the two limb laminations. So what I'm going to do is I have this piece of extra laminate scrap left over. I'm going to place it like this and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the drill press and I am going to sand this down so it feathers in absolutely perfect. That's a perfect feather. That's how you want it to be. These are the back laminations here, which are, gonna, are short. They're 33 inches in length. That'll be rough, and then we'll trim the limbs down after they're glued. So these are very delicate, as you can see. There are two of them there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one down. And I'm just going to take a pair of scissors. I marked it. Just take the scissors and carefully trim that off. See that? No splitting or anything. No saw. Now I want them both the same. So I'm going to go and line these up. I want them identical. Alright. Same job. There we go, we got our two laminations. Now we're gonna have to cut the fiberglass, and that's a bigger job because it's fiberglass. You can't use scissors, that's for sure. You actually have to use, actually, I've used a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade on it with a lot of fine teeth. Um, that, that's probably about as good as anything. So we're on our way. We've just cut the limbs to length, 33. Now we have cut the riser fade out. It's gonna go right here to 14, you see, and the tip fade out, which is going to be nine and a half. So it gives you a look at what the limb is like, so it's stiffer where the fade outs are, right? So the greatest amount of flex in the limb is going to be in the sweet spot. Which is right of course, the recurve part of the bow is what stores the energy, and this part the sweet spot is what gives you the greatest amount of power through the compression and tension in the limb. So these are two 110 thousandths and uh, then I'm going to put a 50 thousandths glass and a 40 thousandths glass on it. I'm making this bow about 60 pounds. So now what we got to do is glass.
one last check on this and uh, I've taken the scraper there's some glue on the face lamination that I didn't get off with a little bit of sandpaper I, I found my scraper which is a much better idea and I'm just scraping to get that glue off just to make sure everything's the right length I centered my bow I where I trimmed it, I put the end of the, the long sheet of fiberglass here. I come around now, press down, press in here, and mark where you're going to cut. Now, I said it's 67 and a half, but going down from that end to that end to mark it right there. That gives me the glass exactly the same, so I'll take that off and cut it. I have the full 72 inch piece of glass here. I took the back lamination that's already been cut to length, and I'm going to place it up against the glass and mark it. That way they are going to be identical. Okay. So I'll flip it around to the other end. Make it flush on the end. Okay. Mark it. Those are the two cuts to get these two pieces of glass the same. So we have three cuts. We have the one on the long piece because the bottom is this long single piece of glass. And then we have the top which has two cuts at the face. No, back. The back has the two pieces. The face is one piece. Do everything you can to keep your stuff clean and brush it all off before you glue. This is the blade I use. You can see it's very fine tooth. It's a fine tooth metal cutting blade. And we're going to use a jigsaw for it. If you ever have to just buy one saw, jigsaws are amazing because they, you can build, I built buildings with just a jigsaw. So there you go. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to put a block of wood on each side of the glass and then cut it off to keep the glass from splitting down the grain of the glass. Uh, all right, we're cutting the glass. I have my mark right here, so I'm going to take this and put it right on the top. The other piece of wood I'm going to put underneath so it's overlapped. So the blade has to cut through the bottom part of that wood along the edge here. And this, this will help keep from splintering. Okay. Okay, there's one strip of glass. Okay, nice cut. Fairly clean. Now we just got one more cut to do. When you store your glass, you have one side that has been sanded and is ready for glue. So if you're going to store it, put those sides together and the exterior sides are going to protect that so it stays clean. Now we still got more to do. We have to go up to the store and buy some tape. You need two types of tape. You need green tape, you need filament tape. Okay, last cut. Now we have all everything cut. We've cut our glass to length, we have all we have all the components ready to glue. However, you can't glue without protecting the glass because if you get glue on the glass, it'll wreck the surface of the glass. You can sand it down and stuff; it'll still look the pits. You'd end up painting your bow camouflage just to hide it. So, what you're going to do is we're going to get tape, and we're going to tape the glass. I've never used painter's tape before. I've always used masking tape and press it down real firm and it creates a barrier the glue can't ooze under it since I'm building this bow for a fellow in Oklahoma 
I'm not going to experiment with the green tape, but I think on my next bow, I'm going to go with painter's tape, green or blue will do, and try it because it comes off so much easier than masking tape does. We're through for now. We've got to go get some filament tape we're going to use for when we're gluing things together and all that stuff. So here we go. We're going to shut down for a bit. I've got the tape. The tapes you need, you need good old masking tape or green tape. I'm going to use masking tape uh, for the outside of the glass. It puts a barrier on it so your glue doesn't get over the glass. For when you start putting it together, we're going to need filament tape. And it's tape and has little strings in it that's real strong to help hold things together and then we clamp it all up with elastics. Alright, so you have your glass. First thing you gotta do is make sure it's clean. Any dust particles or anything will keep the tape from making its barrier. Now what I've done is I don't want the glue side of the fiberglass getting dirty, so I have put these two together with the good sides out to tape them. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. The side is a little bit longer than the uh, glass, wider than the glass. Lay it down. All right, then take your roll and press it down until the whiteness of it is gone. All right. That puts a barrier there that uh, prevents the epoxy from wrecking the glass. Okay, if you look at the table, I have set up my uh, parts for gluing. I have the riser and face lamination first. Then I have the long one, so I'm going to put I'm going to put glue on this surface. Then I'm going to glue this surface, flip it over and put it on top. And then I'm going to take that and set it in the form. And then I'm going to glue these together and then take those over and put them on the limb in the form. And then I will use the filament tape to hold it down. I'm going to be mixing glue for this. Now, I'm going to mix in glue here. What I did is I took a felt marker and marked 10 milliliters or cc's and 30 milliliters and cc's because one part's to two parts. All right, to the top of the line with each one and that'll be the correct amount. I always start with the uh, part B, the one third at the bottom, and then pour the part A on top and then stir it all in and then give it a few minutes. It takes about 45 minutes to glue a bow so I don't want to spend too much time let let it set the chemical reaction start on the glue you know three minutes or so and then start gluing. Put it in front of a heater for a bit and warm it up so it pours out better otherwise it's like molasses on a cold winter day. Now we just got to mix it up. Just take your time and make sure everything is set up and ready to glue so you don't have to take it apart because you forgot something or something wasn't ready. And then you have to soak water everything and clean it all up and what a gong show. So just take your time and don't rush. Now what I'm going to do is after I've mixed them all, I'm going to go back through them again and mix them again because the chem is the epoxy works on a chemical reaction, not on a dehydration principle like most glues that have water in them. The water evaporates, or if they have a solvent, the solvent evaporates, where epoxy works on a chemical bond. Now, as I said, set time is about 45 minutes, and without heat, cure time is probably three days. But we use a heat box, which means it's ready to work within you know, 24 hours after having glued it. However, you still have to be careful with epoxy because heat will damage the epoxy. So when you're working on limbs and stuff, you can't allow things to overheat too much. All right, so there we are. And we'll wait just a minute or two and we'll go over and we'll start. 
Okay, what I wanted to point out is they're working on the table here. You can see in the center right there, behind the drum, is the bearing when we did the face of the riser, right? Well, when you're working on the uh, curve of the riser, press up against that, all right? Keep the handle up against there, because what that does is that's going to give you more control as you have that is like a router peg you come up here and now you have control it's not wobbling around so by having it against there you have much better control so when you get into the real farm part of the limb right here and you don't want to cut into the lamination itself this gives you much much better physical control now I take and I bend so what I do is I will take my hand and I will take my thumb, put it in the middle, and I'll bend this back a bit and then come up to it and sand into it so I can look into it and see how close I'm coming, keeping control of it, not to slip and go in and to ruin the lamination of the limb. If you wreck the lamination, you got to strip it all off, re-sand it all down and put new laminations on. Gluing them on when it's already cut out is actually a bit of a glue nightmare. Do your best to not make that mistake. I've done that once or twice and it's also easy to get in a hurry sometimes and actually grind out the curve on your riser and then get excited and cut this out thinking you're going to glue it on and that's actually the wrong process. Okay, Glue the riser on when it's blocked then lay out the curves and then sand the curves down with the drum sander being really careful coming in the wood lamination. Let's see if we can turn this so you can see a little bit better. Having your tools on portable tails, tables is really advantageous. Okay. You can see how we come in. Of course my drills in the way. Alright, so we come in and we're just going to work gently. Need the vacuum on. One thing I might mention is I have the drum sander going at its slowest possible speed and I'm using 60 grit. Keep the drum clean. I can't say that often enough for any of your sanding implements. And a little bit of crate goes a long way. It costs eight bucks and it'll last you like four years, depending on how much you work, of course. Now you can see if we look in here, we're getting real close on this. We're about a sixteenth off. So I am coming in real carefully, starting up high, coming in slow, and I have my thumb right here in the middle. Now, if you look and you're a little higher on the top, All right, something I wanted to point out is, um, and this is really advantageous. All right, as we're working. Okay, what I wanted to point out is we're working on the table here. You can see in the center right there, behind the drum, is the bearing when we did the face of the riser, right? Well, when you're working on the... Uh, curve of the riser, press up against that, all right? Keep the handle up against there, all right? Because what that does is that's going to give you more control, all right? Now, so as you have that, it's like a router peg. You come up here, and now you have control. It's not wobbling around. 
So by having it against there, you have much better control. So when you get into the real fine part of the limb, right here, and you don't want to cut into the lamination itself, this gives you much, much better physical control. Now I take and I bend, I better make sure we can actually see this. All right, so what I do is I will take my hand and I will take my thumb, put it in the middle, and I'll bend this back a bit and then come up to it and sand into it so I can look into it and see how close I'm coming keeping control of it, not to slip and go in and to ruin the lamination in the limb. If you wreck the lamination, you got to strip it all off, re-sand it all down and put new laminations on, and gluing them on before when it's, I mean, gluing them on when it's already cut out is actually a bit of a glue nightmare. Alright, so don't do your best to not make that mistake. I've done that once or twice. And it's also easy to get in a hurry sometimes and actually grind out the curve on your riser and then get excited and cut this out thinking you're going to glue it on. And that's actually the wrong process, okay? All right, anyway, remember, glue the riser on when it's blocked, then lay out the curves, and then sand the curves down with the drum sander, being really careful coming into the, the, fiber, the wood lamination. All right. All right. Let's see if we can turn this so you can see a little bit better. Having your tools on portable tables, tables is really advantageous, okay? And I've, of course, done that totally on purpose. And let's see what we can do here. All right, I'm going to focus on that drum so you can see how we come in. I'm probably too far over. All right, that, that should do. All right, here we go. This is how I do it. Of course, my drill's in the way. All right, so we come in and we're just going to work gently. Need the vacuum on. One thing I might mention is I have the drum sander going at its slowest possible speed and I'm using 60 grit. Keep the drum clean. I can't say that often enough for any of your sanding implements. And a little bit of crate goes a long ways. It costs eight bucks and it'll last you like four years depending on how much you work of course. Now you can see if we look in here we're getting real close on this. All right, We're about a sixteenth off. So I am coming in real carefully, starting up high, coming in slow, and I have my thumb right here in the middle. Now, if you look and you're a little higher on the top, you're a little wider on the top than the bottom, then place your thumb up there and apply a little more pressure to that spot. You want to keep it parallel as possible.
Now I don't have the vacuum going and you can tell it's a little dustier. All right, so, uh, but that's only because we're recording at this time. to keep it clean when you get down low because if if the bottom part of the drum starts to clog up faster than the top one for whatever reason it will sand less all right If you look right here, let me get this in here. This is flush right at the top and not quite at the bottom. So I'm going to come into the bottom, press on the bottom a bit, and make it flush. All right? Okay, you can see that will focus. Come on, focus. All right, anyway, it's totally smooth now. So a lamination will glue in there real nice. Now make sure that you have a nice curved smooth and it's not bumpy on the way down and it's a nice casual taper in. This one is a little bit high right in here. So I'm just gonna take that down a little bit, up against the peg and then use my thumb in here and take that little bit of bump out. So since the, let's back up and do this over. All right, this is how the bow is going to go in the form. The clamp is going to come on top here and clamp in. Now the center mark will be covered by the clamp. So consequently, um, you, you could have slippage, which will put the bow out. All right, so what you want to do is put some marks on the bow and the form so that you can tell if you're slipping or not. So what I've done here alright there's a felt mark on the limb and on the form on the right side now what I've done too alright now right here is the aluminum bracket on the form. So I've gone up and lined up another black mark on the limb with that side of that bracket. This thing. Yeah. Alright, so you have a mark on this side of the bracket, that side of the bracket, and down at the end of the fade out right here you can see. Alright, so when you go and clamp this down, you can keep the bow square in the form so it doesn't shift to one side or the other. All right, so we're getting closer all the time. What we have to do now 
is we have to measure out how long the, the single piece of glass is for this side of the limb, for each side. We need to cut our fiberglass down to size. We need to make sure all the laminations are cut to the right length. All right, so that when they all go in the form, you know, nothing comes up short. It's better to glue and have things a little oversized in length than too short. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Now we also have the fade outs. And um, those are made with the jigs. I will, the, this is the jigs. I think I talked about these before. All right, you take this into the sander, bring the drum up to just above the height of the wide end of the jig, and then what you do, then you turn it around and start sanding, and it sands a little bit off here, then you lower it a little bit. It, little by little, it, it puts the taper on to the fade outs by running through the sander. Now, if you don't have this stuff and you want to do this, then uh, you can just, you can order uh, fade outs through Old Master Crafters and they'll make them for you. They're not cheap. They're probably like 20 bucks a set. All right, so that's quite a bit to the bow. Uh, I make them myself. I did these already. Okay. You can see these are right down to almost nothing on the end and they're there so we also have to take these now I've marked these already this is the tip fade out and uh, at five thousandths of an inch so what we have to do is we have to pull this in and measure how much uh, fade out I need and then we're gonna have to mark that too alright so that we know where it goes and so it fades out in the right place, okay? So those are things that are yet to be done. Uh, we probably need to, I don't think I showed you how to make the tapered limb laminations. Um, first time around, you might want to just order a set uh, from Bingham or Old Master Crafters. I'm not sure which you want to go with, it doesn't matter. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the measuring and stuff and all the little things that, you know, aren't real skill building or any specialties. You just got to measure, mark, and cut. Measure twice, cut once. All right, I've got the glass here and stuff, and I'm going to do the glass last. Um, I need to measure out what the limb links will be and things. And when you go to cut, uh, thin pieces of wood like these fade outs that go down they're going from 20 thousandths of an inch thick here down to nothing here if you're gonna trim actually scissors good scissors trim real well you saw you can split the wood and stuff uh, and to be honest about it a real fine dovetail saw or something is if you have to saw by hand Place them on a board and cut straight through. Do not put them over an open edge because they'll bend and they'll crack because they're so thin. So you have to be pretty careful about that. Uh, I would not use a bandsaw ever to cut the thin stock across the grain. It'll break it all up and everything. So sometimes hand tools are the best answer. If you ha had a jig, you could cut it through a table saw, but if you have coarse teeth on the blade, it's going to wreck it too. So handsaw is the best answer. I have a number of, I like Japanese saws that cut on the pull stroke. All right. Uh, <clears throat> this is a little Japanese dovetail saw. You can see it has very fine teeth on it. All right. And that cuts that thin stock really well. All right. And you don't have to worry too much about being real square and all that because it doesn't matter. It's just all in the length because you're going to trim all these ends and everything down the road. All right, so I'm going to clamp this in place so I don't knock it off and actually break and split one of the laminations. If you crack a lamination, all right, uh, it's not the end of the world because what you do is spread it when you glue up, put glue in the crack, 
and then glue on both sides and and when you put it under pressure and clamp it it'll glue that little crack that you made by bumping it or whatever and that will actually not be a weak spot in the bow unless it was really severe all right uh, but mostly that is going to just fill in with epoxy it'll be compressed and it'll harden it'll be stronger than the wood around the joint uh, but I always like to spread the crack a little get a razor blade and go in and get some glue down in the crack and stuff then put it all in place and glue it all up and uh, I have a bow still to this day that had I bumped the end of the lamination because I wasn't being careful so I patched it up like that put it all together and that bow still shooting many many years later so anyway um, just a bit of advice because it's going to happen sooner or later all right All right, I have made the fade out. I, I make them 14 and a half inches to start with, both of them, riser and tip fade outs, and then I cut them down. All right, the tip fade out is cut to nine and a half inches in length. Now, I've got it pretty fine on the edge, but not fine enough for a cold bleed into the two limb laminations. So what I'm gonna do is I have this piece of extra laminate scrap left over. I am going to place it like this and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the drill press and I am going to sand this down so it feathers in absolutely perfect, okay? right down to nothing all right now you can see it's a little bit curved in there but that'll that's okay that'll fill with epoxy if you're really worried about it you could go in take your finger and I'll show you and do a little bit up here okay now you see that's a perfect feather that's how you want it to be. Okay. Okay. Now what I've done, let's just zoom this back. All right. We got a stupid window here. It makes it windows everywhere, so it's kind of hard to get good uh, light here. All right, so these are the back laminations here, which are, gonna, are short. They're 33 inches in length. That'll be rough, and then we'll trim the limbs down after they're glued. So. These are very delicate, as you can see, there are two of them there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one down. And I'm just going to take a pair of scissors. I marked it. Just take the scissors and carefully trim that off. See that? No splitting or anything. No saw. Now, I want them both the same. So I'm going to go and line these up. I want them identical. All right, same job. There we go. We got our two laminations. Now we're going to have to 
cut the fiberglass and that's a bigger job because it's fiberglass all right you can't use scissors that's for sure you actually have to use actually I've used a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade on it with a lot of fine teeth um, that that's probably about as good as anything all right so we're on our way we have our riser fade outs cut to nine and a half inches I'm sorry take that back all right we have our riser fade outs cut at 14 inches we have all right let's do this over All right, we, we've just cut the limbs to length. All right, 33. Now we have cut the riser fade out. It's going to go right here to 14, you see? And the tip fade out, which is going to be nine and a half. So it gives you a look at what the limb is like. So it's stiffer where the fade outs are, right? So the greatest amount of flex in the limb is going to be in the sweet spot which is right in the middle there and that's what that's all for of course the recurve part of the bow is what stores the energy all right and this part the sweet spot is what gives you the greatest amount of power through the compression and tension in the limb all right so these are two 110 thousandths and uh, then I'm gonna put a 50 thousandths glass and a 40 thousandths glass on it I'm making this bow about 60 pounds. Okay. One last check on this, and uh, I've taken the scraper. There's some glue on the face lamination that I didn't get off with a little bit of sandpaper. I, I found my scraper, which is a much better idea. And I'm just scraping to get that glue off. We're ready, ready to glue. I'm just going to have to get everything ready in here advanced to do that. There's about what I've done here is I have placed the fiberglass underneath the bow. Just to make sure everything's the right length, I centered my bow. I where I trimmed it, I put the end of the, the long sheet of fiberglass here. From that end to that end to mark it right there. That gives me the glass exactly the same, so I'll take that off and cut it. I have the full 72 inch piece of glass here. I took the back lamination that's already been cut to length, and I'm going to place it up against the glass and mark it. That way they are going to be identical. So I'll flip it around to the other end. Make it flush on the end, mark it. Those are the two cuts to get these two pieces of glass the same. So we have three cuts. We have the one on the long piece because the bottom is this long single piece of glass and then we have the top. Do everything you can to keep your stuff clean and brush it all off before you glue. I'm gonna cut the glass now. So what we do, this is the blade I use. You can see it's very fine tooth. It's a fine tooth metal cutting blade and we're gonna use a jigsaw for it. You ever have to just buy one saw? Jigsaws are amazing. You can build. I built buildings with just a jigsaw. All right. So there you go. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a block of wood on each side of the glass and then cut it off to keep the glass from splitting down the grain of the glass. We're cutting the glass. I have my mark right here, so I'm gonna take this and put it right on the top. The other piece of wood I'm gonna put underneath so it's overlapped. So the blade has to cut through the bottom part of that wood and along the edge here and this this will help keep from splint the closer you can keep it to the edge the firmer it'll be the less vibration less chance for splintering okay nice cut fairly clean okay now we just got one more cut to do. When you store your glass, you have one side 
that has been sanded and is ready for glue. So if you're gonna store it, put those sides together and the exterior sides are going to uh, protect that so it stays clean. Now we still got more to do. We're gonna have to go up to the store and buy some tape. You need two types of tape. Well, actually three in my book. You need green tape, you need filament tape, and masking tape. <laughs> We've cut our glass to length. We have all the components ready to glue. However, you can't glue without protecting the glass. You get glue on the glass, it'll wreck the surface of the glass. You can sand it down and stuff, it'll still look the pits. You'd end up painting your bow camouflage just to hide it. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna get tape and we're gonna tape the glass. Now, I've never used painter's tape before. I've always used masking tape and press it down real firm and it creates a barrier. The glue can't ooze under it. Since I'm building this bow for a fellow in Oklahoma, I'm not gonna experiment with the green tape, but I think on my next bow, I'm gonna go with painter's tape, green or blue will do, and try it because it comes off so much easier than masking tape does. We're through for now. We gotta go get some filament tape we're gonna use for when we're gluing things together. Let's take a break. I've got the tape. The tapes you need, you need good old masking tape or green tape. I'm going to use masking tape uh, for the outside of the glass. It puts a barrier on it so your glue doesn't get over the glass. For when you start putting it together, we're going to need filament tape. And it's tape and has little strings in it that's real strong to help hold things together. And then we clamp it all up with elastic. All right, so you have your glass. First thing you got to do is make sure it's clean. Any dust particles or anything will keep the tape from making its barrier. Now what I've done is I don't want the glue side of the fiberglass getting dirty, so I have put these two together with the good sides out to tape them. If I just find the end of the tape, we'll be in business. There we go. That's a problem with masking tape. Sometimes it doesn't pull up too easy. And once you get it going, you want to pull it at an angle. Not straight, but at an angle. That way it doesn't tear off. So what we're going to do is place this on the end there. We're going to line it up flush on one side, wider than the glass. Lay it down. All right, then take your roll and press it down until the whiteness of it is gone. That puts a barrier there that uh, prevents the epoxy from wrecking the glass. Now the tape is a little bit oversized. So we're gonna trim that off very carefully. Tape off. It'd be nice. I have no source of one and three quarter uh, masking tape, but if you had some, it would be awesome. Okay, if you look at the table, I have set up my uh, parts for gluing. All right, so I have the riser and face lamination first, then I have the long one, so I'm going to put. So I'm going to put glue on this surface. Then I'm going to glue this surface, flip it over and put it on top. And then I'm going to take that and set it in the form. And then I'm going to glue these together. And then take those over and put them on the limb in the form. And then I will use the filament tape to hold it down. I'm going to be mixing glue for this. Now, you can see these little clear plastic. I'm in a mixing glue here. These clear plastic cups are almost invisible. So, while they have the measurements marked on them, what I did is I took a felt marker, marked 10 milliliters or cc's, 
and 30 milliliters in cc's because one parts to two parts anyway now I can see it really easy just go to the top of the black line with each one and that'll be the correct amount I always start with the uh, part B the one-third at the bottom and then pour the part A on top and then stir it all in and then give it a few minutes it takes about 45 minutes to glue a bow so I don't want to spend too much time let let it set the chemical reaction start on the glue three minutes or so and then start gluing if your glue is a little too thick put it in front of a heater for a bit and warm it up so it pours out better Otherwise, it's like molasses on a cold winter day. Three is probably a little bit much, but I'd rather have a little more uh, glue than not enough and have to remix in the middle of the glue job. Now we just got to mix it up. Again, back to my galvanized nail. Just take your time and make sure everything is set up and ready to glue so you don't have to take it apart because you forgot something or something wasn't ready. And then you have to soak water everything and clean it all up and what a gong show. So just take your time and don't rush. Now what I'm going to do is after I've mixed them all, I'm going to go back through them again. The epoxy works on a chemical reaction, not on a dehydration principle like most glues that have water in them, the water evaporates or if they have a solvent, the solvent evaporates where epoxy works on a chemical bond making sure I get the stuff from the bottom up through the the top and well mixed in there both directions really by the time I get done mixing here it would be just about ready to start using you got about, well, as I said, set time is about 45 minutes and without heat cure time is probably three days but we use a heat box which means it's ready to work within you know 24 hours after having glued it however you still have to be careful with epoxy because heat will damage the epoxy so when you're working on limbs and stuff you can't allow things to overheat too much and we'll wait just a minute or two and we'll go over and we'll start All right, it's time to glue. I don't have a lot of time here. We're just, just like we did with the riser, we're gonna glue each surface with a thin coat of epoxy. I just poured half the cup out, tilting my hand. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I may have to make another cup of glue. We'll see how it goes. That was brilliant. Things happen. Rubber gloves would be a great idea. Okay, make sure you got glue on everything. Look it over carefully. Look for 
light colored spot. Sometimes you miss an edge. Sometimes it's just light colored wood. Okay, so what we're going to do now I'm going to take this, set that there, bring this up, get that glue off there. Right along the edge. Okay, now we're going to I think we'll start with this edge since there's a drip of glue on it. Glue spreads a little further on the glass than it does on the wood. It's easy to knock these things over. I've done it lots of times. Okay, so I am just going to shut this down for a bit. So, what I'm doing now is we're just going to take this and place this on here. Almost knocked my glue over again. So we take this. Make sure there's no. Oh, oh, just docked it over. Call me Grace. Now let's just do it in the form. Okay, now I have this one done, so what I'm going to do, I need to flip it over and do the other side, but this is all kind of yucky, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do this. Slide it down. Now I take this one, lay it down. Put it on the other side.
All right, so what we need is a riser lamination glued up, so we're going to put that right there. Make sure we put it on the right, correct side, which is over here. So this is the fade out. That side's done. We go to the thick end. The riser goes to the thick end of the lamination. Oh! Trying to press it to move it. As that happens. There. All right. So we have the riser fade out here. Okay, tip fade up. See, I missed a little spot of glue on the edges of this limb. It'll probably be okay, but we're going to make it right. Okay. This goes the other way. Now we finish off. Okay. So there is the limb put together. We're going to go straight to the bow, just enough to keep it in place. Now it's time for filament tape. Okay, then we're going to fold this another time. Try to keep things clean as possible. We've got a whole tub left. Hopefully, I don't actually. Uh... Oh my goodness gracious! It's hardening already. That is terrible. I have to mix new stuff. Gluing up. You see, I've taped these laminations in place. I clamp the ends to help hold the fade outs in place. All right, now we need to plastic again. Where's my roll? There it is.
things have moved. That's no good. Okay, that should hold that in place. Time to do some elastics. I'm going to drop this a little further down in the vise. Clamp it a little harder. Sweatshirt off because you're going to get warm doing this. It's a job. I use rubber from tractor tubes. Here we go. And I overlap them, so really every lap creates a bit of a double lap on the one you just put on before it. Keep the pressure on. Make sure nothing's moving. Just pull it through and let it pinch. All right, now we're gonna do the other limb and then uh, put another layer on after both limbs have actually been cinched down. like rolling these up in balls I've always found that to be a pretty good way of doing it and another thing you can do is you wrap over on one side and it'll all kind of be at an angle like this then come the other way and wrap the other way back so it puts equal tension on both sides okay Second layer of plastic on, 
all of this rubber would have epoxy on the sides. And when you take it apart, you have pieces of epoxy on there that are like glass. All right, and you go and put it on the bow, you're going to slice your hands up, putting it up on. You work up a pretty good sweat doing this. I turn the heat off in the shop for a bit just for that purpose. because this is getting pretty old bring it around pull up tighten up carry on I got lots of elastics there they're not all real long I need to make new ones Should have enough and then we'll work our way down Keep on. Okay. It's time to get a new tube, I think. It's been a while since we made some bows, so I don't know, it's probably 10 or 15 years old. Okay, we're going to tie this one off. short one to finish that out. Uh, that one should probably do. Well, that's an old one. <laughs> 